Hello everyone, Father Brett here. Welcome to our sermon prep. And this week we are preparing for the fifth Sunday of Lent in Year B. Wow, how quickly Lent has shot by, hasn't it? We've only got two weeks left, this fifth week, and then of course, Holy Week. I hope that Lent has been a, a time of spiritual renewal for you, a time where you've been able to be with God, uh, to, to look at your relationship with God. If it hasn't, don't lose heart, because you've still got two weeks left, and so much can happen in two weeks, especially Holy Week, which is so powerful for all of us. So, let's have a look at the readings for this fifth week. What is God saying to us? The first reading comes from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, and then verses 31 to 34. Our responsorial psalm is Psalm 51, and the verse for our response is perhaps a summation of what Lent is about, what we hope to achieve in Lent. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Wouldn't that be great if we emerged at Easter with pure hearts? The second reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. And the Gospel is, once again, from the fourth Gospel. John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. It's quite amazing to think that the story of the agony in the garden is not included in John's Gospel. He doesn't write about it. And that's strange because that moment, uh, the agony in the, in the garden, is almost burned into our consciences as Christians, isn't it? It's such an integral part of the passion narrative. Um, and yet, St. John doesn't include it in his passion narrative. But echoes of it occur here in the 12th chapter of his Gospel. And in fact, if we look at verses 27 to 28, we get a real sense of the agony in the garden. It's different. It, uh, John uh, crafts it in a different way. First of all, it's, it's private. It's not private, sorry. It's public. Um, the synoptic accounts of the agony in the garden are private. It's Jesus and just three disciples, eh? Peter, James, and John. What also comes out in this uh, version is that there is a deep intimacy and connection between God the Father and His Son, Jesus. And that comes out by the fact that Jesus asks a question of God. He's wrestling with God, but feels comfortable enough to ask God. And God answers him. And so clearly there's a bond between the two of them. And that comes out very powerfully in this extract. Also what comes out is the idea of judgment. Um, you will remember... I hope, if you, and if you joined us for my sermon last week, that we dealt with judgment and salvation in terms of John's theology last week. And that comes out here again. Judgment is passed on the world that rejects Jesus. Anyone that rejects Jesus brings judgment on themselves. And that was sort of the gist of what I was saying last week. And so you can see that theme, that theology, coming through once again in John's Gospel. Let's hop across to the first reading. Now this extract from the prophet Jeremiah is an extract we know quite well. It's very familiar to us. Why? Because it is, in fact, the uh, longest... Old Testament quote to be found in the New Testament and it speaks of covenant and covenant has, 
is a theme we've had at the back of our minds as we've made our way through this Lenten season. You will remember right at the beginning, in the first uh, and second weeks of Lent, we spoke of baptism and covenant, relationship. Okay. The prophet Jeremiah now speaks of that quite clearly. This is radical, though. He's the first prophet in the Old Testament to speak of a new covenant. In other words, a covenant that replaces the covenant made at Mount Sinai, which we know so well from the accounts of Exodus and Deuteronomy and Numbers. Um, but here now is a new covenant. There are elements of the new covenant that um, come from the old, uh, old covenants. In other words, it's a relationship, a bond between God and his people. That was in Old, Test old Covenant times as well. It is based on law. Remember the Ten Commandments, making uh, the, that covenant at Sinai. So the law and relationship are still foundational. But what Jeremiah makes radically different is that this law will be written on our hearts. It will be internalized. And because it is internalized, it cannot be broken. It is an everlasting covenant, an eternal covenant. The other covenants were broken, but this cannot be broken. And so it's a powerful uh, break from uh, the thinking of the Old Testament, this creation of a new covenant. But for us as Christians, we immediately associate with, associated with the covenant that we have through Jesus, through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Now God's law is implanted in our hearts. Now it's internalized. We are called to love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our strength. Also, we know that the covenant created in and through Jesus Christ is eternal, is everlasting. Nothing can break it. So we associate what the prophet is saying here with the covenant that is made with Jesus Christ. Let's look at the letter to the Hebrews. Again, this is a familiar text to us. And the reason this is familiar is because an expanded version, uh, i.e. more verses, are read on Good Friday. And so we, we recall some of the elements of this reading. Here, there is a great deal uh, uh, of mention made regarding suffering and what the point of suffering is. In Greek literature, suffering was a way of learning. Okay, So people learnt through suffering. And that comes out here too, doesn't it? Jesus learnt through his suffering. He became perfect through his suffering. But the author of the letter also emphasizes a, a Hebrew wisdom tradition in that it is through um, uh, that we are brought up and we grow uh, through discipline, strict discipline. And so um, suffering is associated with a strict upbringing. And so God's people we learn through suffering. So Jesus learned through suffering. We too learn through suffering. Another important dimension of the suffering is that being made perfect, which comes about through suffering, is a way of priestly consecration. It's another way of, of phrasing priestly consecration. Men were made perfect in their consecration as priests in the Old Testament. So the sense that Jesus is a priest uh, and that that priesthood is a suffering, serving, sacrificial priesthood comes out and I think is, is well, definitely clearer on Good Friday. 
So, there's some ideas and themes for this fifth Sunday of Lent. I hope to see you. Um, the live stream mass will be the scrutinies, and we will take the readings from the uh, fifth Sunday of Lent, cycle A. But there will be a recorded mass for this Sunday, year B. Okay. I hope to see you at either of the masses. Take care, look after yourselves, and be safe.